All right, so today we're actually going to be taking a look at Plasmic, and we've already taken a look at Plasmic from the visual editor perspective, but what we're going to do today is actually see how it integrates directly into a code base and allow a code component to be put right into a visual editor. So we're going to create a code component. It's going to be a markdown component so that we can support pl uh, markdown in Plasmic and also be able to then put that in to the visual page editor. As you can see here, I've already kind of done that just to show how what, what we're going to end up with. It's a markdown component right here. It's going to be available in our code component section of the visual page builder. And we're going to do it directly from the code base in our VS code instance. So let's get started. So first thing we're going to do as usual is create a new plasmic project. Once you log in, you can create a new project like this. Uh, we'll create it in my playground. It's just going to be a blank project. We don't have to do anything special right now. Okay, perfect. So we have a new plasmic project that we can hook into our code base. So the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to go to the plasmic documentation and we're going to go through their developer quick start. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go to the CLI quick start and this will actually create a plasmic project for us. So as you can see here, we can use MPX or yarn. We'll use MPX because everyone has MPX installed or NPM and we will go to a folder that we want. So right now, I'm just going to go into a plasmic folder and I'm going to run this command and it's going to take us through kind of a CLI. I uh, need to install the packages. Yes. We're going to give a project the name. Let's do uh, plasmic components. And yes, sure. TypeScript next.js plasmic loader. And we'll use the pages. As you can see, the app directory is starting to be worked on, but it's an experimental phase. And then here, we just need to input a URL for the project. So we already have a URL here. We can take that, go back to our terminal, input the URL, press enter. It's authenticating and it's all done for you. So now you can see it's installing all the dependencies. So perfect, now we can just follow the, the instructions, go into Plasmic Components, and what we're gonna do actually is open up our VS Code Editor because we're gonna actually be writing some code here that's gonna connect directly to Plasmic. As you can see, it's created our Next.js app with all the Plasmic init. so you can see here there's even a token ID. I'll be deleting these, obviously these are personal, so don't share these out, but for this purpose, I'm just gonna leave them. Uh, well, one, th one thing we're going to do here is by default, we'll use the latest published version. We don't really care about published. Uh, there is a speed, per like a performance hit if we use the preview version, but that doesn't really apply to us right now. So we'll just do that as true so that we can actually use it. Uh, and then we're going to go back to the developer documentation. So if we can take a look here, the next thing we want to actually run our yarn dev server, then we will take a look at the next steps. Okay, I'm going to open up our terminal here. We're going to get run our yarn, or sorry, npm run dev server. That should open on the local 3000. We can take a look at what that looks like. Boom. So we can see that in our local host, we have exactly what we have in our Plasma app, which is good. So that means our connection is successful. Uh, when we can move on to the next phase, which is actually registering a new component. The next thing we're going to do here is actually set up an app host. We need an app host because it's a special connection between the actual visual page builder and our code base to be able to render out the artboards of our components that we build out. So we're going to move on right to that. Since we built out our component using create plasmic app CLI, we actually don't need to do much of a setup. If you didn't do that, if you're just adding it to your existing repo, you can always use the four existing repos uh, documentation. But for now, we're actually going to go into verify your app host is working phase. So here, all we have to do is just go to localhost slash 3000 plasma host. So we can actually just do that and see that here. It actually says your, your app is ready to host plasma studio. All we have to do is open your project in plasma studio and click on the ellipses menu. It takes you through exactly what you need to do. So let's quickly do that. So we know what we need to do. We need to go into our ellipses over here, configure project and set up our app host. Make sure you get to hit HTTP. And then you want to go localhost 3000. And then don't forget your plasmic host at the end there. You can confirm it should do a refresh and connect directly to your app host. And therefore, the components that we create now in our VS code should now start to appear directly in our uh, visual page builder, which is obviously a web app. 
So let's do that. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna create a component. Uh, let's create a new folder called components. And in the components folder, we're gonna create a markdown component. So markdown.tsx. And we're using a markdown component as an example, but really this is a good feature add for Plasmic. Plasmic currently does not support uh, direct markdown file support or direct markdown text support. So adding a markdown component to your existing Plasmic project can allow you to kind of embed to a different CMS and have the text from that CMS be pulled in as markdown and automatically rendered as HTML on your page. So that's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna go through the markdown component. It's fairly simple. We're gonna use a library called React Markdown. So the first thing we're actually gonna to need to do is install that library. We're gonna cancel out of the server, close that and it's clear. And let's do an npm install of React Markdown. And that will give us access to the React Markdown uh, package, which we can then import in our new component that we're making. It's going to be called React Markdown. We're going to do the auto import. And here we're going to export default function. Uh, for default function mark mark down and we're going to uh, have some props obviously we're going to need to actually do a markdown property which is going to be optional although you know what we're going to make it mandatory uh, because what's the point of a markdown component without a markdown property and here we're going to do that so now uh, we can see VS code is kind of getting ahead of ourselves I do want to have a uh, Actually, I do want to have a default value. So let's do a, a quick default, default markdown, right? And then let's, uh, let's create our own kind of markdown here. Let's do a heading one with a hello with, and then a italics world like that, yes. So that'll tell us that it is working. It should be kind of a larger, bolder text with an italic world there. Um, and in fact, because of that, we're actually going to make this a optional so that it doesn't complain if there's nothing being passed into it so that we can see our actual default value that we created. So here is kind of quite simple. We do a react markdown. Uh, we don't want to close that quite yet. We need children. Yes. And then you can see here that it's already kind of auto completed for us the correct syntax. And we don't need components quite yet. We're not going to get into the nitty gritty of React Markdown as a library. You can check out that. Uh, just go to the React Markdown NPM and there's a ton of documentation on how you can adjust it. And then here we have that done. And now we just have to close this. Let's add a semicolon here and we're good to go. This is really it. So this is our React Markdown uh, component that we're going to be embedding into Plasmic. But we're not done yet. The next step of this is actually going back to plasmic init.ts. And here you can see here that there is a commented out register component function. So we're actually going to uncomment that. Obviously, we're going to have something different in between there. But we need to import our markdown component that we just created and create it as a actual register component. So yes, markdown, that's correct. We need to add some properties here. So the properties are going to be uh, a name, which is going to be, yes, whatever. The name here, it will be what appears in our visual page builder. So we're going to call it Markdown. And then here we also need props. These props are interesting. This is what actually exposes the input fields for your visual page builder so that you can import dynamic input field props from the no code page builder right into your code components. So that's how the props are exposed. Uh, here we're going to create props call a prop called Markdown, and the little change here. Uh, and again, you can go into the Plasmic documentation to find out all the different types of props you can expose. Each different type of prop will give you a different input field. So if the prop is a drop down, a select menu, if the prop is a radio button, whatever, uh, or a boolean, it's going to obviously give you a toggle, true or false. But if it's an input field, it'll give you a text box. What we really do need is a large input field because we need to be able to also import uh, spaces and we need to be able to see the markdown that we're importing. So we're going to change our just regular string input field or text input field 
into a large text input field by doing type string and then adding a control to it and putting the control as large. And that will give us a larger input field to be able to actually put in like a full blog post worth of markdown and see it rendered on the screen. So with that, we should be able to hit save and go back to our no code visual page builder. In our page builder, we should be able to refresh. Oh, uh, right. We went back to our visual page builder, refreshed, and now localhost refusing connection. This is because we didn't restart the server again. So let's restart the server really quickly. And npm run dev. This is a typical thing that I always mess up. But if we go back now and reload the page, it should show us the actual studio. The connection will be reestablished. And what that means is that most likely, if we go into our components, we can see, boom, code components has now appeared right here. So this is something that we just created in our, in our code editor and now is appearing in the Visual Page Studio, Visual Page Builder, which means we can start using it. So if we want, we can just start dragging it over and let's put it right here. And we can see that our default value is in fact working. It is hello world. Our markdown is unset, but if we click on our markdown now, you can see that, hey, you can now have a big text area that you can put in whatever you want. So let's put in some more text, hello, plasmic peeps, right? And then we can put in maybe some, uh, a list item, first item. Again, this is just to test out that it is working, second item. And then maybe let's do some bold text. This is bold text. And again, if you don't, if you're not familiar with Markdown, there is a lot of tutorials online that show you what kind of how Markdown works. Bold text. So don't worry about that. Um, and we can even put in some code, right? So if, like if we wanted to do JavaScript code, uh, this doesn't have a highlighter or anything like that, but it will give us a nice, like a at least a decently formatted code block that we can use. Like we can do uh, function hello world and then do that. See, it even auto completes some, uh, some of the code for us and does all the spacing. So it knows what it's doing. There is some intelligence in even this markdown editor that we've just created. Uh, and then we can just put like return hello. This is just really nothing. Oh, well, let's, let's actually do it properly and return a string called hello. Uh, and that should format us a nice little code block. So if we just click save here, we can see boom. As you can see, we do have some visual uh, issues here, but this is stuff you can actually style in the visual code editor, as well as you can style inside of the code component. Um, there are different ways to style each and every element that's created, putting different sizing for your H1s, for instance, or H2s, putting different line heights, putting different margins, and you can style each and every one of those generated HTML elements from Markdown to kind of be custom to whatever your application needs. And with that, we're kind of at the end of this tutorial. Uh, if you have any questions, reach out in the comments below, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, it helps a ton. Uh, we're gonna be doing some more Plasma tutorials. We might be doing some other no-code builder tutorials as well as uh, obviously we're gonna still go into SvelteKit. There's gonna be a ton of stuff that we're gonna be covering on this YouTube channel. But really, I just wanted to give you a quick overview of this kind of hybrid system that I really, really like. Like the, the actual visual page builder is really, really solid and you can do everything you want inside of it, including database connections, APIs. But if you do need to extend it, you're not limited by a internal code editor. You're only limited by the scope of a, a framework like Next.js, which is pretty much unlimited. So anything you need to add, Markdown is just one example. You can add any other component. You can do data fetching. You can do whatever you want and expose any properties you want that the user to be able to fill in themselves if you're doing this for a client, for instance. Okay. And I think we're done.